A very good morning students. Today we'll be learning about biodiversity. The term biodiversity is of recent origin. It was not until early 1990s that it appeared several times in varied reputed journals world over. Despite its increasing use in the present context, the term has remained remarkably vague and variously defined. Simply put, Biodiversity can be defined as the variety of life on the earth at all levels, from genes to species to ecosystems. But more commonly, biodiversity is referred to as a study of species. At the Earth Summit, biodiversity is the variability among all living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. The diversity of the nature is the result of an evolutionary process that started about 2 billion years ago. It is, however, being destroyed at an incredible speed. The rainforests are a case in point. The number of species endangered by human activities and the number of natural or semi-natural habitats being destroyed, fragmented, or changed are constantly growing with destabilizes the ecosystems and cause the loss of vital resources. The United Nations General Assembly had proclaimed 2010 as the International Year of Biodiversity to create awareness about the understanding of the threats to and the need for conservation of biodiversity. India's Biodiversity India ranks among the top 10 species-rich nations and shows high endemism. As per the fourth National Report on Biological Diversity, Government of India in so far over 91,200 species of animals and 45,500 species of plants have been documented in its 10 biogeographic regions. Continuous surveys and explorations have added new discoveries. 41 plant species in 2007 by Botanical Survey of India alone. The unique features of the plant diversity among others include 60 monotypic families and over 6,000 endemic species. Besides, India is recognized as one of the eight Vavilovian centers of origin, which is concentrated areas where most life has originated. It has a diversity of crop plants having more than 300 wild ancestors and close relatives of cultivated plants which are still evolving under natural conditions. India is also a vast repository of traditional knowledge associated with biological resources. According to IUCN, the total number of plant and animal species described so far is slightly more than 1.5 million. Estimates place the global species diversity at several million. A large proportion of species waiting to be discovered are in the tropics. More than 70% of all the species recorded are animals, while plants including algae, fungi, bryophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms comprise no more than 22% of the total. Definitions of Biodiversity Biodiversity is the variety of plant and animal life in the world or in a particular habitat. Biodiversity is measured by two major components, species richness and species evenness. Now let's understand what is species richness. Species richness is the measure of the number of species found in a community. Now let's move on to species evenness. Species evenness is a measure of the relative abundance of the different species making up the richness of an area. For example, the sample forest A has 4 tigers, 5 deers and 6 rabbits and sample forest B has 1 tiger, 6 deer and 8 rabbits. Both the samples, that is forest A and B, they have same richness, that is 3 species, which constitutes the species richness and the same total number of individuals. However, the sample forest A has more evenness than the sample forest B. Now let's move on to other diversities, alpha diversity. It refers to the diversity within a particular area or ecosystem and is usually expressed by the number of species that is species richness in that ecosystem. Beta diversity. 
it is a comparison of diversity between ecosystems usually measured as the change in the amount of species between the ecosystems gamma diversity it is a measure of the overall diversity for the different ecosystems within a region genetic diversity genetic diversity is the total number of genetic characteristics in the genetic makeup of a species a single species might show high diversity at the genetic level for example homo sapiens there are chinese indian american and african versions of homo sapiens india has more than 50000 genetically different strains of rice and 1000 varieties of mango genetic diversity allows species to adapt to changing environments this diversity aims to ensure that some species survive drastic changes and thus carry on desirable genes species diversity it is a ratio of one species population over total number of organisms across all species in the given biome zero would be infinite diversity and one represents only one species present species diversity is a measure of the diversity within an ecological community that incorporates both species richness that is the number of species in a community and the evenness of the species in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles with very few exceptions tropics which is the latitudinal range of 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south harbor more species than temperate or polar areas now let's move on to the next important topic bioprospecting nations which are endowed with rich biodiversity explore molecular genetic and species level diversity to derive products of economic importance stable community a stable community means that there is not much variation in the productivity from year to year it is either resistant or resilient to occasional disturbances which could be natural or human made and is resistant to invasions by alien species now let's understand another important topic which is ecological diversity ecological diversity refers to different types of habitats a habitat is the cumulative factor of the climate vegetation and geography of a region it includes various biological zones like a desert coast estuaries wetlands mangroves coral reefs etc at the ecosystem level india for instance with its deserts rainforests mangroves coral reefs wetlands estuaries and alpine meadows has a greater ecosystem diversity than a scandinavian country like norway let's understand another important topic which is endemism there are more than 2 lakh species in india of which several are confined only to india that is are endemic to india endemism is the ecological state of a species being unique to a defined geographic location such as an island nation country or other defined zone or habitat type organisms that are indigenous to a place and are not endemic to it if they are also found elsewhere now let's move on to the next important topic in biodiversity keystone species keystone species is a species whose addition to or loss from an ecosystem leads to major changes in the occurrence of at least one other species certain species in an ecosystem is considered more important in determining the presence of many other species in that ecosystem all top predators like lion tiger crocodile elephant are considered as keystone species because they regulate all other animal population indirectly foundation species foundation species is the dominant primary producer in an ecosystem both in terms of abundance and influence for example kelp and kelp forest and corals and coral reefs now let's move on to the next important topic that is a flagship species a flagship species is a species chosen to represent an environmental cause such as an ecosystem in need of conservation these species are chosen for their vulnerability attractiveness or distinctiveness in order to engender 
support and acknowledgement from the public at large. For example, Indian tiger, African elephant, giant panda of China, the leatherback sea turtle, etc. Now let's understand biodiversity of India in a whole. India is recognized as one of the mega diverse countries rich in biodiversity and associated traditional knowledge. India has 23.39% of its geographical area under forest and tree cover. With just 2.4% of the land area, India accounts for nearly 7% of the recorded species even while supporting almost 18% of the human population. In terms of species richness, India ranks 7th in mammals, 9th in birds and 5th in reptiles. India represents 2 realms, 5 biomes, 10 biogeographic zones, 25 biogeographic provinces. Now let's understand realms. Biogeographic realms are large spatial regions within which ecosystems share a broadly similar biota. A realm is a continent or a subcontinent sized area with unifying features of geography and fauna and flora. The Indian region is comprised of two realms. They are the Himalayan region represented by the Paleatric realm and the rest of the subcontinent represented by Malayan realm. Biomes of India. The term biome means the main groups of plants and animals living in areas of certain climatic patterns. It includes the way in which animals, vegetation and soil interact together. The five biomes of India are the tropical humid forests, the tropical dry or deciduous forests, warm deserts and semi-deserts, coniferous forests and the alpine meadows. Now let's understand what are the biogeographic zones. Biogeography deals with the geographical distribution of plants and animals. Biogeographic zones were used as a basis for planning wildlife protected areas in India. There are 10 biogeographic zones which are distinguished clearly in India. They are as follows, the Trans Himalayas, Himalayas, Desert, Semi-Arid, Western Ghats, Deccan Peninsula, Gangetic Plain, Northeast India, Islands and the coast. Now let's look at the biogeographic provinces. Biogeographic province is an ecosystematic or biotic subdivision of realms. Now let's look at the wildlife biodiversity of India. Firstly, the Himalayan mountain system. The West Himalayas have low rainfall, heavy snowfall, temperature conditions. In the East Himalayas, there is heavy rainfall, snowfall only at very high altitudes. Lower altitude conditions are similar to the tropical rainforests. Himalayan foothills, that region has flora which is comprised of natural monsoon evergreen and semi-evergreen forests. Dominant species are sal, silk, cotton trees, giant bamboos, tall grassy meadows with savannas in Terai region. Now let's look at the western Himalayas. Western Himalayas is a high altitude region again. Flora, it comprises of the natural monsoon evergreen and semi-evergreen forests which include the rhododendrons, dwarf hill bamboo and the birch forests mixed with alpine pastures. The fauna is dominated by Tibetan wild ass which is the kiang and then we have the wild goats, thir, ibex and the blue sheep. Now let's look at the eastern Himalayas. The flora is dominated by oaks magnolias, laurels and birches covered with moss and ferns, coniferous forests of pine, fir, yew and junipers with an undergrowth of scrubly rhododendron, dwarf bamboos, lichens, mosses, orchids and other epiphytes dominate. Next in the fauna, the eastern Himalayas are dominated by red panda, hog badgers, forest badgers, crestless porcupines, Takins, etc. Now let's move on to the peninsular region, which is the Indian sub region again. It is two zones, peninsular India and its extension into the drainage basin of the Ganges River and the desert region of the Rajasthan, the Thar of the Indian desert region. Peninsular India, it is home to tropical moist deciduous to tropical dry deciduous and scrub vegetation depending upon the variation in rainfall and humidity. Flora, 
Sol in the north and east extensions higher in rainfall and teak in the southern plateau are dominant trees. Fauna, the fauna that is dominant is elephant, wild boar, deers which are cheetal or axis deers, hog deer, swamp deer or barasinga, sambar, munchtak or barking deer, antelopes which include the four horn antelope, nilgiri, black puck, chinkara, gazelle, wild dog or dhol, tiger, leopard, cheetah, lion, wild pig, monkey, striped hyena, jackal, gore. Now let's move on to the next region, the Indian desert. Thar desert of Rajasthan has unique flora and fauna. Flora is dominated by the thorny leaves with reduced leaves, cacti, other succulents are the main plants. Fauna, animals are mostly burrowing ones. Among mammals, rodents are the largest group. Tropical rainforest region, distributed in the areas of the western Ghats and northeastern India. The flora is mostly extensive grasslands interspersed with densely forested gorges of evergreen vegetation known as sholas occur in the Nilgiris, which is an offshoot of the western Ghats. Sholas also occur in Annamalai and the Palani Hills. The rainforests of the western Ghats have dense and lofty trees with much species diversity. Fauna, this region is very rich with all kinds of animals. There are wild elephants, guar and other larger animals. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the flora, these are home for typical tropical rainforests. Mangroves are distributed in the coastal areas. And the fauna, among mammals, bats and rats, Andaman pig, crab eating makaki, palm civet and deers, spotted deer and barking deer, hog deer and sambar. Now let's move on to the next region which is the mangrove swamps of Sundarbans. Sundarbans are the delta of the Ganges where both the Brahmaputra and the Ganges join and drain into the Bay of Bengal. Flora, various species of mangroves. Fauna, in the higher regions of the mangroves, there are spotted deer, pigs, monitor lizard, monkeys. The most interesting animal of the Sundarbans is the Royal Bengal Tiger. Now let's move on to the next topic which is the biodiversity hotspots. Biodiversity hotspots are the regions with high species richness and a high degree of endemism. The British biologist Norman Myers coined the term biodiversity hotspot in 1988 as a biogeographic region characterized both by exceptional levels of plant endemism and by serious levels of habitat loss. Conservation International adopted Myers hotspots and in 1996, the organization made the decision to undertake a reassessment of the hotspots concept. According to Conservation International, to qualify as a hotspot, a region must meet two strict criteria. Firstly, it must contain at least 1,500 species of vascular plants, which are more than 0.5% of the world's total as endemics, which is to say it must have a high percentage of plant life found nowhere else on the planet. A hotspot, in other words, is irreplaceable. The second criteria is it has to have lost at least 70% of the original habitat. It must have 30% or less of its original natural vegetation. In other words, it must be threatened. In 1999, C, uh, that is the CI, which is the Conservation International, identified 25 biodiversity hotspots in the book Hotspots, Earth's Biologically Richest and Most Endangered Terrestrial Regions. In 2005, Conservation International published an updated title, Hotspots Revisited, Earth's Biologically Richest and Most Endangered Terrestrial Ecoregions. The 35 biodiversity hotspots cover 2.3% of the Earth's land surface, yet more than 50% of the world's plant species and 42% of all the terrestrial vertebrate species are endemic to these areas. In 2011, the forests of East Australia region was identified as the 35th biodiversity hotspot. Now let's look at the biodiversity hotspots in India, firstly the Himalayas which includes the entire Indian Himalayan region and that falling in Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, China and Myanmar. 
Next region is the Indo-Burma, which includes entire northeastern India except Assam and Andaman group of islands and also includes Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia and southern China. The next region is the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka region, which includes entire Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. The other region is the Sunda Lands, which includes and Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei and Philippines. Now let's look at another important region which is the World Heritage Sites. World Heritage Sites means sites of any various areas or objects inscribed on the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization World Heritage List. The sites are designated as having outstanding universal value under the convention concerning the protection of world cultural and natural heritage. This convention which was adopted by UNESCO in 1972 and enforced in 1975 provides a framework for international cooperation in preserving and protecting cultural treasures and natural areas throughout the world. The first list of world heritage sites was published in 1978. The convention defines the kind of sites which can be considered for inscription of the world heritage list ancient monuments, museums, biodiversity and geological heritage and sets out the duties of the state parties in identifying potential sites and their role in protecting them. Natural heritage sites are restricted to the natural areas that furnish outstanding examples of the earth's record of life of its geological processes, provide excellent examples of ongoing ecological and biological evolutionary processes and also contain natural phenomena that are rare, unique, superlative or of outstanding beauty or which furnish habitats or rare endangered animals or plants or are sites of exceptional biodiversity. Nominated sites must be of outstanding universal value and meet at least one of the criteria below. International Year of the Biodiversity The United Nations declared 2010 to be the International Year of Biodiversity. It is a celebration of life on the earth and of the value of biodiversity for our lives. The slogan is biodiversity is variety of life on earth. Biodiversity is life. Biodiversity is our life. Man and Biosphere program, another important program that we have to learn about. It was started by UNESCO in 1971, later introduced in India in 1986. The aim is studying the effects of human interference and pollution on the biotic and abiotic components of ecosystems, conservation the ecosystems for the present as well as the future. The main objects of man and biosphere program are to conserve representative samples of ecosystem, provide long term in situ conservation of genetic diversity, provide opportunities for education and training and to provide appropriate sustainable management of the living resources, promote international cooperation. India has a great wealth of biodiversity in its forests, wetlands and marine areas. It has wide range of habitats ranging from tropical rainforest to alpine vegetation and from temperate forests to coastal wetlands. India consists of fertile river plains and high plateaus and several major rivers including Ganges, Brahmaputra and Indus. India shows a great diversity in climate, topography and geology, hence very rich in biodiversity. The Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India records 47,000 species of plants and 81,000 species of animals. This is about 7% and 6.5% respectively of...